What follows is a demonstration on how to use Infinity to combine multiple pickups into a single mesh. Okay, so first thing to do is obviously set up a new project. So I've opened up Infinity and it's come straight to the new project window. Uh, next I'm going to just create a job. Okay, and I'm also selecting coordinate system here, which is MGA zone 54, plus GL09. Um, one other thing to note on Infinity is that you need to choose the project location when you're building a project, so I've put it inside of the relevant customs folder. For the initial model, we've already got an ASCII file, which is a combination of several pickups. So I'm going to import that ASCII file, file into Infinity now. What I'm going to do that is I'm going to select from the Home menu, then select Import. And then I'm going to navigate to the Customers folder, which is in here. And we've got an ASCII file here for, for this excavation. Uh, so I've actually already got templates make up, made up, but I'm going to make a new one just to show you how to do it. So you select New. Uh, just call it. Um, you need to select your delimiter, which is obviously comma here. Um, and then we need to just uh, nominate what all of these are. So the coordinates coming in are in local grid, heights are all for mat metric, so they're um, AHD heights. Okay, so we're just going to select here point ID, easting, northing, orthometric height. And that's all we've got to do. Um, everything else should come in fine, so I just select OK. And now you can see I've got this as a permanent template saved. So anytime that you need to import this same type of data, you just select, select that import type. And now just select import. Anything that we import from an ASCII file is predetermined as a control point by, uh, by Infinity. So you can see here all of these points that we just imported have been given the control point symbol here. Um, but just quickly, if I rotate this data around, you can see that this is an excavation, a vertical excavation for um, a shot creek wall. You can see all the points here. There's one stray point here, which is just, I'm just going to quickly remove. So I just press Shift, highlighted the area, and now I'm just going to delete it. I'm just have a quick look over the data, make sure there's no, no more stray points. There isn't. So next thing I'm going to do is mesh all of these points. So again, I'm going to highlight them all. And then I'm going to go into uh, surfaces, and then I'm going to create a refined mesh. The mesh is now being created. I'm just going to turn the points off so I can inspect it easily. You can see the mesh here. So the mesh is looking pretty tidy. You can see that it's, it has bridged some gaps here. I'm not too worried about that right now because they can't shop treat anywhere that hasn't been picked up by excavation. So we're not going to have any erroneous uh, reports later on. So I'm just going to move along this model, and I can see here there's a gap. All right, so I need to infill that gap. So I'm just going to turn the surface off, turn the points on, and now I'm going to just highlight these six points here and create another refined mesh. If I go over into the inspector window, which I'll just enlarge, and go down to the meshes, I can see the two meshes that surfaces that I've just made second surface is the one that's displayed right now. Um, and because that's an infill section, I usually rena rename these. So I'm just going to go into the surface and rename that to infill one. OK. I know, I know from talking with the customer that this, sec this surface area here is actually not being picked up and has been shock credited. So it's going to remain a problem uh, for the remainder of this project. So I'm just going to bring that back across and open up my view window a little bit bigger again. So now we've got this infill section here. I'm just going to scroll across and check there's no more infill sections. So I turn all the meshes back on and move back across and just check it out. This big gap here is for a bridge, so it's meant to be here. OK, that's, that's looking good. So we've now made up all of that mesh. Uh, and we're going to output it. So I'm going to turn the points off. And then I'm going to highlight the mesh. Now, highlighting the mesh by using shift and click does not work uh, when exporting. 
So you, what you have to do is actually go navigate into the inspector as we did before. Uh, when you open up a project, you usually start off in either the points or the coordinate system area. Um, but if we select the mesh area, and then we select hold down control and select both surfaces, this will actually allow us to output the 3D faces, faces as a DXF file. So after I've highlighted them, I'm going to leave the surfaces uh, tab and move into the home tab and then select export selection. Then I'm going to go down to the type of data that I'm exporting and change it from Smartworks Captivate to DXF. Yeah. And I'm just going to give that a name, which for now I'm just going to call This is automatically being dated with my project date, but if I was coming in and editing uh, meshes later, that then this is going to uh, I'd probably uh, change this to the current date for my output. So I'm just going to select export here. Okay, so I've just exported that into my exported directory, um, and that could be go used on the instrument. But before I go on to that, what I want to do is just go over the method for adding in some more pickups. So say for example, We've just come, come back from the field, um, surveyed some more excavation, and we want to add that area of pickup, say, here, into the, into the model, okay? So the method to do that is, first of all, we need to obviously um, import the, uh, the Leica files. Uh, so if you're using a CS35, just navigate to your DBX directory, and you can find the raw files. I've got the files here. They've been sent to me by a, by a customer. Um, here we go, so we've got some more pickups here of the excavation. And we've got two files, so I'm just going to select them both by pressing control and then just select them both with the uh, left mouse button. Okay, so if I just zoom out here, after this is imported, I'll, I'll get a report. I've got the report manager opening up here. Um, you can save these. I'd recommend changing the, uh, the header from the default one first. You can change these quite easily by selecting edit at the top here and just import a header that you've created for yourself. Um, this is just one that I've done for another customer. I'll just close this for now. We can have a look at the, the pickup that's, that's occurred. So you can see here that there's a, there's a pickup uh, added where they've lowered the floor here. Uh, and we can also see that they've also picked up that area I showed you before. Also notice here that at the moment we've got triangles crossing this gap. So what I do is I, I delete this existing model. Uh, here it is. All right, you'll see that the infill model is still there, and I'm going to leave that there because that's not changing. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is turn all the points back on, turn the surfaces off, highlight all of the points again, and now I'm going to create a new uh, mesh. And you can see that these new areas now, <clears throat> if I turn the points off, have been added into the mesh. Uh, I can, I can uh, turn those radiations off as well. I'll just show you how to do that. Go back to the home mem menu, select survey data here. And we just have to find the TPS observations and just use this um, this light light bulb here to turn them off. And you can see here that it's looking tidy. There is a point that we should probably remove from this at the moment. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but um, you can see that that's that's done. Um, it's just an extra point that I'd accidentally imported, and there's another one here as well. But by and large, like the whole the whole surface is ready ready to be used. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn the infill surface back on. That's, that's up here. You can see why I've left that, that behind now, so that that remains, remains present. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to output these data files and then bring them into a CS35 uh, using the Inspect Surfaces application. Okay, so I'm going to go into the surfaces area here. Um, just go back up to the primary area here. And I'm going to select these two surfaces, and as we did before, I'm going to export them. One thing I'm going to change this time when I'm exporting, rather than putting them in the exported data directory of the job, I'm going to put them straight into my uh, data directory of my um, Captivate software, so that when I open them up in my CS35, I can use them straight away. So where I'm going to go, I'm just going to navigate to the 
folder that I need to be in. Okay, so we're in this folder now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select this star key at the top right here, and that's going to add this folder to my favorites. So you can see here now in my favorites area, <laughs> I've got the data directory straight away available, so I don't have to go and find it every time. And then I'm just going to uh, select this 3D face model here and just add it as, as combined mesh. And let's just pretend that it was the next day of the week. So we've got the combined mesh for the current date with those added areas inside of it. And we want to select a DXF file again, because that's what Inspect Surface is used to import. So now I'm going to export that data. OK, and then we're going to import it into our Inspect Surfaces application. Now looking at the desktop of the CS35 field controller, I'm just going to open up the Leica Captivate directory here and just go into data. And here is the DXF file that we output earlier. OK, I'm just going to minimize that. I'm going to open up Captivate. The project that is just uh, opened straight up onto is actually a scan of some shotcrete, and that shotcrete has been sprayed over the excavation model that we just created, or the area of the excavation model that we just created. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare this uh, scan pickup with the model and work out how thick the shot shotcrete is. So I'm going to go into the Inspect Surfaces application at the bottom here. We only need to have uh, design data that's the uh, pickup project. So I'm going to leave it as it is right now and select OK. And we go into the screen which asks us to uh, determine what the reference surface is going to be or import the reference surface. So it asks at the top here, how do we want to create that surface? And we want to do that from the DXF file that we created. So we'll select the fourth option from the top. Um, you may have a different uh, name here. It may say um, 3D faces um, and vertices. Uh, that just means that you're on a different firmware version than we're on here. Um, the current firmware, which is 2.3, displays it in this way. And you can see here that the DXF file, because we don't have very many on here, has been selected immediately. So I'm just going to select OK. And those 3D faces will be imported. Uh, points are not important here, they've just uh, come through with that other file, but you can see that the triangles have been important and that's what's important. Okay, so the next thing we need is the scan that we just collected, so I'm going to select the points from the job manually. There is a trick here, um, if you just page straight to points and select OK, all points are always going to be selected. However, if you need to select the points from the 3D viewer because you have some set up points in the job or some points you don't want to use. Um, first of all, you'll need to display the points, as I would have turned off here. You can see the points are displayed now. And we have got a set up point over here. So to select just these points from the scan, I'm just going to press the cog at the bottom and select the window select tool at the top, and then just drag a get window over the points you want to use. You can see they're here now. So I'm just going to go OK. And then it's going to ask us to determine some color uh, deviations. Uh, so what we have is we have zero and we have positive. Now positive is at the moment always going to be clockwise off my model um, and that's correct because my model is on the left hand side of the road. If the model is on the right hand side of the road, select the function key at the bottom of the screen. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to go back one window. Select the function key at the bottom of the screen and go to settings. And then we need to go into the design tab at the top, design page. And you can see that we have theoretical profile direction. And we could change that to anti-clockwise if we're working on the other side of the road. So our reporting goes in the same color direction every time um, for, say, a, a shockwave wall on the opposite side of the road. OK, I'm just going to go OK on here. Reselect those points really quickly. And now we're in our color area. I'm happy enough with this uh, with this thematic plot that's here at the moment. I'm just going to work with it. So I'm going to go OK. 
<clears throat> not offsetting the project at all, um, but I am going to do uh, to to use this uh, object that we just found and the points that we selected. So there would have been 28 points if we'd included the setup point. Selecting OK, and it'll calculate all of the vectors. As you can see here now we are in the uh, in this project window at the moment. I'm just going to rotate this around so we can see some of the triangles. And I'll window in. If you don't want this model to be displayed, you can have it not displayed. And if you want to see the colorized vectors, what you need to do is press function, display, and turn the points back off. Now you can see the vectors. Uh, the shotcrete wall is supposed to be 100 mil thick, and that's good because blue was 100 mil offset in our uh, color uh, scale chart there. And you can see as well, an interesting thing is that some of this pickup actually ended up above the model. So what Inspect Surfaces is doing here is it's using the normal of the triangle for any points that sit over the triangle. And then if some points do not sit over the model at all, it goes to the nearest uh, edge of the model, uh, down to the nearest edge. This is really useful with this sort of pickup because otherwise these points would not be having anything to be reported against. So the, the, the model has come up fine. We, we can see that the model's working and that the points have all been uh, calculated correctly. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the report. So I'm going to press function, go into tools. I'm going to select create report. Uh, the, port, the output directory is going to be the data directory, which is where we had that DXF file earlier. And there's the report here, so I might just rename that to be uh, the date um, 170706 uh, shot report. And then, all right. So this report's in a HTML format, obviously. I select OK. Um, so I've created the report now, and I'm just going to exit. We can actually capture screenshots as well, if you ever want to get all those uh, nice looking coloured vectors coming out. Uh, not really useful statistically. So I'm just going to move back to the home screen by tapping on the battery at the top and selecting home. And that's going to exit all the way out of the app for me, back to the home screen. OK, so finally I'm just going to exit back out of Captivate. I'm going to navigate to the data directory again. And the report that we just created is here. Uh, make sure that you have Google Chrome installed. It works best with these styles of XML reports and outputs. And you can see here that we have the inspect services report. You can see that 100% of the data is more than 100 mil, which is, which is good, because that was the minimum thickness of the shot crate here. And then if we select points per page, 5,000, we'll see all the see all these points here um, and their values that we all 27 points that we measured so that concludes how to combine meshes in infinity to be used in the inspect surfaces app and also how to import that mesh and make use of it uh, to create an uh, inspect surfaces report